didn't record would be a smart idea. We're professionals. <laughs> oh, we get paid to do this. Hey, girl. Hi. First around the mic of 2019. Yeah. Oh my, I can't believe it's 2019. And I keep seeing everybody posting now. It's been, uh, what is it, 10 years since 99. No, 20 years since 99. And that we're one year away from the roaring 20s. Oh. I'm excited. I am going to do the, the 2020s. Like, it's going to be hella glam. I'm going Great Gatsby. Except I don't want to end like Great Gatsby. But I want Great Gatsby's life. Hmm. <laughs> I know we were talking about like Taylor Swift has been dropping. People think that she's been dropping low key hints on her social media that maybe a mermaid might be the theme of the the next album. Oh, yeah, she had the party, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what if if it comes out in 2020, she references going Gatsby for this whole year in a song on Reputation? What if it's going to be like a total Ooh. roaring twenties, Taylor? Yes, <laughs> I am okay with that. She would pull it off. Like she has that look, so she could totally do it. I'm kind of into it. Taylor, if you don't do it, I'll be disappointed. I mean, I won't be. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she does, we're good with. Yeah. Uh, so we are we decided to start 2019 and, and this first episode of Around the Mic for the new year. Um, we're filming this also. Hey. Hi. Hey, what's up? You can now watch Around the Mic with Chelsea Corinne, Middays on Sojo, and myself, Heather DeLuca, um, on YouTube, as well as listening to the podcast. So if you want to see all of our hand motions because we talk with our Eth hands ethnic hand gestures <laughs> and also just the fact that we're girls and we get so excited yeah. <laughs> about everything uh, then you can you, you can take the party over to sojo 1049 on youtube with that said i'm going to take the cans off i think our levels are good all righty talking industry term there oh my god oh <laughs> are you okay i digress <sighs> i love that we're filming this and you just did that that makes me so happy i dig so I had been teetering on wanting to try a an organic deodorant, aluminum free, that I had seen on Amazon. Okay. Um, it's called Native. Okay. And they started selling it in Target. Okay. I was out of deodorant, and I thought, oh, my gosh, they have this here. Like, I'm going to treat myself, because when I say that, it's $12 deodorant. Oh, my goodness. It smells like... It, Twelve dollars, Heather. Oh, I could have bought three of the regular. Yeah. You know, for that. But I was like, I've been wanting to try it. I'm out of deodorant. It's fine. I just got paid. I can justify the twelve dollars. <laughs> it's so insane. Um, plus, if I use my Target card, I get five percent off. Oh, there so you go. And did you scan like, it with the cartwheel? Like the app? Didn't do that. I'm so over uh, the cartwheel app. I gotta use the app. That's the only way to do it. But you're I'm apparently wet. not comfortable. <laughs> I'm wet. <laughs> you're doing like a chicken dance with your arms. I'm wet. It it makes me smell great. Well, that's good. I smell like coconut and vanilla, so Ooh, so it keeps like me tropical. smelling nice. But I feel wet. I I'm feeling sweaty. Is it not an antiperspirant not then? I, it clearly is not. Yeah, I know <sighs> uh, a lot of them aren't the organic ones because they say the antiperspirant part isn't what's good for. It's not good for you, right? Um, and I know when they say like when like my grandmother had cancer, was one thing she couldn't use is antiperspirant deodorant for some reason. Wow. I don't know why. Well, it clogs um, the lymph nodes, maybe. I, who knows? I'm but not she a doctor. had yeah. I'm I don't know. But she started to she had to use like non antiperspirant yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. deodorant. But I know people that make their own deodorant now too. Like that's a thing. I mean, I don't I've have been, the patience I've for that. Got, I, this goes back to high school for me, where some hippy dippy, you know, <laughs> mom of a student tried to convince me to use like this. It's like a crystal, and you just sort of wet it. It's like a block of of deodorant, and you just wet it and put it. That just sounds made like me something you'd buy at And horrible. <laughs> and I went to a Catholic high school, so, you know, three layers of clothing with the sweater and yeah. then the button-down shirt and, and everything. So I could tell you right now, I can't deal with the wetness. No. I just I don't like to feel tacky, and I feel tacky <laughs> right now. Not worth the $12, apparently. <sighs> we no. are over dramatic about everything, which brings me to my first topic for the day, which is... We're over, overly emotional. Or are we? We don't know if it's an us thing. We don't know if it's a that we're on the radio thing. We don't know if it's a woman thing. But I'm going to let Chelsea explain. I'm cringing right now just because I know this she, is going to make me sound so pathetic. Her but face it's okay. is blushing because I know what's going through her mind is the trailer for the new Avengers yes. movie. And she's going to start getting teary-eyed. Why don't no, you explain no, why? No, no, no. Okay, so when that trailer came out, I'm a huge fan of the Marvel Universe and the Marvel movies and the Marvel TV shows, everything. I love it all. I'm obsessed with it all. I probably have Spider-Man socks or something on right now. <laughs> but anyway, so 
the trailer came out for Endgame a couple weeks ago, and I legitimately cried. I was so excited for it. Like, I cried. I bawled my eyes out. They showed you a clip of Captain America with, like, tears streaming down his face. I cried. I cried like a little baby. Just like I cried, there was a montage of Captain America from this point, from the beginning to now. I cried watching that, kind of thinking of what's going to happen next to him. And I watched that trailer, like... 20,000 times in one day and cried through most of it. I didn't think that you cried because you were excited. I thought with, okay, spoiler alert if you haven't seen Avengers Infinity War, which I just did on Christmas. Oh, you did? I thought, well, I mean, I watched it from like three quarters of the way through, but people were talking. We had guests over. I I kept kind of turning my attention to the TV set and I did sort of see how it ended. So I get why you would be crying. I thought the ending of Avengers Infinity War was the reason why you were crying at the new trailer. I mean, no and yes. I think a little bit of yes and no. I think it's because it's the end of an era. It is the end of this era for Marvel movies. And they've said that over and over again. Um, I wouldn't doubt, though, if Chris Evans ups his contract again because it seems like he loves doing this more than anything else in his career. But it is an end of an era, and it's the end of, like, Iron Man as we know him because Robert Downey Jr. is out after this movie. Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Mark Ruffalo, like, all of those main people, they're going to be gone after this movie. I didn't know that. Allegedly. They say they haven't upped their contracts again, but who knows what's going to happen. But that's something to me was, like, oh my gosh, this is so emotional. This is the end of everything that I've been watching for over 10 years, accumulating to this one movie. They said that was going to be Infinity War, but it really is this movie is the end of it all. I think it's your brain coming to the conclusion (laughs) of how much time and money you've invested into this franchise. Girl, I took off of work to see the first (laughs) Avengers movie for the sixth time in theaters when it was over the summer, it came back out in theaters. It was the sixth time or seventh time me seeing it in theaters. And I took off of work to go see it. That's how sad I am. I think subliminal, I'm subliminally, so your your mind is crying for you. Uh, maybe you're like the you're like the Marvel Universe Dream fan. Yeah, yeah, I am there. I am what marketing people aspire to uh, find because I am a marketing person's dream. Uh, anything related to whatever I want, and totally I want it all. I am extremely susceptible. I know that though, but that's also why I have like. A lot of, like, the Marvel Pop Funko things. I have a lot of, Mm -hmm. I mean, even Doctor Who stuff. Like, I have a lot of stuff because I'm like, oh, I just got to have it. Yeah, I'm the dream consumer in that way, too. Makeup, too. Some people call it hoarding. I call it collecting. (gasps) Yeah. It's curating. (laughs) So so Chelsea gets overly emotional about Infinity War, specifically. It's only because we've talked about it a million times, and she was, she definitely was emotional at the ending of that. She gets overly emotional about a lot you know, of things. these characters, the things <laughs> things that she's really super passionate about. Yeah. So we want to know, is that just a Chelsea thing? I hope is not. Is it a movie buff thing? <laughs> is it a Marvel thing? Like, we want to know. We want to know. Well, you Mostly don't want sad make things, though. Feel better. Because, like, I oh, love no. watching sad movies and sad TV shows. Oh, no. There are certain episodes of, like, certain shows that I love that I have watched a million times, and I cry every single time, but I still watch it. Nope, I and I know you. I'm going to cry, and I'm going to do it anyway. Two episodes of ER I can never watch again. <laughs> one with Noah Wiley and Tandy Newton, one with Mackay Pfeiffer. Never going to happen again. The Notebook, don't even show it to me on the guide. Don't even yeah. show me that it's oh, on. No. Like my husband like will threaten cry. me <laughs> to put it on. He's like, he's like, you maybe you should start making dinner or or I'm putting this on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He definitely can wrangle me. But knowing me, what would you say is the number one thing I get overly emotional about? Animals. Oh, I do. Animals. This girl, let me put it this way. This girl stopped traffic in the middle of a highway. (laughs) Not like a back road. No, no, no. A highway (laughs) to usher along Canadian geese across the road and thought I was going to help her. But, like, this girl right here, like, I just got to laugh. Like, it's hysterical. I just stood there and laughed as she stopped traffic on, again, a highway to usher Canadian geese across the road that we're trying to get across the road. Well, I I just, I don't want to be the one who witnesses the geese apocalypse. I don't want to see. <laughs> I think some people might want the take... geese apocalypse around oh, here. God, but you you could just <laughs> like let watch somebody run over geese, whether it be by like accident or because no, they I don't want to watch it. But... And what if the one doesn't die right away? What if it's just sitting there squawking, waiting for death? That's awful. And then the rest of them come over and they're like, 
trying to help their yeah. geese friend or they're just too stupid and they're walking along. But Chelsea, I do get overly emotional the, about yeah. geese. I do. The one animal nobody else cares about. I do. I'm a geese Samaritan. <laughs> I love that. Everybody wants the Canadian geese to go oh. and you are. But they, they they flock together. They they stay with their babies. It's a mom, dad kind of thing. I, I just cannot. And you're not the only person who is born witness to, oh, man. to this. And do you think anybody helps me? Nobody helps me. They just stand there and laugh at me. I've done this across four lanes of traffic on the Black Horse Pike. I've done it across <laughs> Route 9. Like, I will help them whatever I can do. I did have a situation where a mama, mama goose, I was just trying to help her little one up oh, under the no. curb. I wasn't trying to touch it. I was just trying to get it. Mm-mm. He couldn't get up under the curb. And she came at me They're with vicious. venomous spit. She was hissing at yeah. me. Oh, Oh my gosh. Like as a kid, we rescued them. a baby bird one time. Like the mom we saw in the middle of the road, the baby bird was like chirping on the side of the road. We took it home. We tried to nurse it. And, but yeah. unfortunately, baby birds is that they usually don't survive without I their know, mother. And unfortunately, died overnight. We were going to bring it th- that next day to a, a place that takes care of birds because um, they were closed that day. But we tried. And so I do that sort of things. But like, I'm not going to run out to the middle of a highway. There were um, turkeys that crossed by in my town in, on Route 9, but everybody stopped. My, my husband's concern is that one of these days I'm going to get out and I'm going to do it for like a turtle. Yeah. Or more, like a more snapping geese, turtle. <laughs> and someone's not going to stop for me. And then I become the roadkill while the geese lives. I mean, I have crashed my car trying to save, save a goose. I, it was Well, it wasn't my car. It was his. But still. <laughs> That doesn't make it better, Heather. That actually makes it worse. (laughs) Um, And then, like, the geese flew away. And, of course, I'm on the side of the road with my car wrecked. And a cop pulls up. And he's just like, were you on your phone? No, sir. Were you drinking? No, officer. I was was trying to save geese. Where? I don't see any. Well, because they flew away. He must have thought you were lying. He must have thought you were, like, some, like, crazy chick that, like, was trying to get out of getting a ticket. Chances are, if you live in South Jersey and you see someone at an area shopping mall or, or on a highway, because I've seen it go wrong on, on like the AC Expressway. Yeah. I've seen this gone horribly wrong where it's just feathers everywhere. <laughs> you just see them floating in the air like somebody whacked a pillow. Um, it, chances are it's me. Oh, my goodness. I thought you were going to say my that I'm overly emotional about Taylor Swift. I think there's a lot of my family members that think that I am because I'm on constant defense mode. Yeah, I feel no, like I mean, she's so, I don't know how she can be the most popular person on earth and still be like the most hated on. Kardashians. Yeah. People love to hate. And it's a, it's a, it's a, such an unfortunate thing, but people love to hate. So the more somebody's hated, the more popular they become. I mean, the Kardashians are an example of that. Taylor Swift, but Taylor Swift has genuine fans as well. I mean, granted, I'm also a fan of the Kardashians, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I do find myself the same thing, though, was defending Taylor. And, and, and I've been a fan of her since the beginning. And, so And I get violent. <laughs> I mean, I, I will twist, almost literally twist arms. Like, don't come for my girl. Fair. And if my mom wants to know, like, why I get mad at Katy Perry or why I'm mad at this Kim and Kanye over something, it's because you came for my girl. Like, don't come for my girl. And the issue is that I'm 43 years old. <laughs> I shouldn't be this apoplectic about people hating on Taylor Swift, but it makes me crazy and I will defend her to my dying day. I get that about Taylor and I get that, uh, like, with uh, Jessica Simpson. Yeah. Because Jessica Simpson, to me, most people think I'm a huge fan of Taylor, which I am. I'm a massive fan of Taylor Swift. But everybody was thinking, like, if you were going to rank them. was I know Jess is your girl. Jessica Simpson, to me, is how you are with Taylor. It's like, don't. Don't say anything about her weight. Don't say anything about her her lips because they look like they've got injections. But I like know, whatever. For real, I almost texted but you the like, other night. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, they were pretty bad. But like, I'm still gonna defend her because I still love her. She's and pregnant right now too, so maybe yes. it's just a little extra yes. bloating. Uh, her kids are adorable. Her husband's beautiful. Yeah, she, uh, I love her. Yeah. How did she? <laughs> how did she wind up dumping like Nick Lachey and marrying up? I know, because <laughs> she did dump him. I know. Which is we know. fantastic. I know. It sounds awful. So hard for me. <laughs> that was the one I was like, oh my God, I have to um, I have to be Team Nick on this. I'm sorry. Heather. What? I love them both equally, but I was I'm was definitely Team Nick. I just feel like Do you do that? You do that too then. You choose sides in a celebrity divorce. You do, because I do too. Yeah, because I'm definitely Team Angelina. Me too. Yeah. Team Hello. Angelina. Yes. And like I was Team Jessica and then um with cause I I, I like country music as well as 
Miranda and Blake, I choose Team Miranda. I've always liked Miranda I'm a team little Blake bit better. For sure, but I never really knew anything yeah. much about them in the first place. Except that I think I found out that, oh my God, this is totally unrelated and I'm going to totally <laughs> date myself. I literally just, speaking of podcasts, I started listening to this podcast called Slow Burn, which kind of goes back to the Clinton administration okay. and re examines his being impeached over the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And there was another woman that had come forward in the middle of all that saying that she she had been sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton in a hotel room while she mm. was campaigning for him when he was running for governor. And I found out that the women, um, I'm sorry, the I think either for Paula Jones or for this particular woman, there so many people wrapped into that Bill Clinton scandal that it was like Miranda Lambert's mom or dad. They were lawyers that that really? were took on that case. Huh, I didn't know that. So they're they're part of they're part of uh, American history. Interesting. Yeah, didn't know that. I mean, half of me hates her and loves her for the fact that she shot and killed all of the meat that got served at her wedding, like on their wedding day. Yeah, at, with her and Blake. Yeah, she's a big hunter. She is. I love her. I don't know. I'd... I'm also okay. passionate about people not hunting, but I'm not going to start on that because I could really cry. God, why do I get so upset about things? So you're going to hate me on Saturday is what you're saying? Don't just don't tell me you're anything. Just gonna... Don't tell me anything, Chelsea. So... I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so are, are, are we the only people that go from zero to 60 in like five seconds? Can you help us out? I mean, I've tried. Lexapro. I try. It's still, <laughs> What's great is not even zero to more. sixty. It's zero to sixty to back to zero in like a, a snap of a finger. It's like, oh, oh my god! And then you're like, all right, whatever. I'm good now. We but have like just been that. actresses, we don't have one emotion. We got them all. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of emotions, um, I happened to to scroll past this on Christmas Day. It was a an Instagram post um, on New York Magazine, and the picture is Happy Holidays from the texts. Of exes past. Oh. Santa Claus on the telephone. Oh. Am I the only one who gets these? I used to. I haven't in a while. I'll get the occasional birthday, but like, I actually, I would say that too hasn't happened in years. I'm lucky, but I also am a person, I'm a clean break and I. I don't want anything to do with you afterwards. Like okay. I'm done. Like yep. I am I that a person. Lot of people like that. Yeah, I'm married to one, and that's fine. Yeah, I don't stay friends with my exes. I don't say acquaintances to my exes. I don't care. You're not part of my life anymore. Bye bye. I tried. Some things have been sticky, <laughs> and I, you know, I've had to learn the hard way. It's sort of better to just mm -hmm. make that clean break. But I, why is it? Like, what is it about a holiday? Does it just make someone nostalgic for like? Those particular holidays that maybe they spent with you that, like, triggers, oh, I, I need to text this person even though I haven't given a, a poo-poo about them for 364 days a year. But these will come on sometimes random things like Arbor Day or Fourth of July. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, they tend to come around, you know, the birthday, the Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. the Christmas, Happy New Year type of things. And it's like... <sighs> I have I have a I have a thought as to why. But do you do it? Do you no, send any? No, because again, clean break. I don't okay. I don't care. It sounds awful. I sound so harsh, but it's true. I just don't care. But um, I think I think it's an excuse. So it's weird to just it get opens a text. The door. Yes, it's weird to like just randomly text your ex out of nowhere, like, "Hey, how are you?" But if you say Merry Christmas, and then usually the person on the other end feels bad, they're like, oh, they're only saying Merry Christmas. Let me not sound like a jerk and respond where I just don't respond. But they'll just do that. And then it opens the door. Well, how have you been? How's your family? Blah, 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 blah. And that ends pretty quickly. Yes. That exchange ends pretty quickly. But it's a good way to like still sneak in and get back into your brain. It's, and it's like an ego thing. There, like, yes. How quick will this person respond to yes. me? How important is, is my message to them really? Like how... How thirsty are they to hear from me? Mm -hmm. I really think people manipulate the situation. Oh, think absolutely. That way. I mean, I, I mean, because what I've gotten are the um, Merry Christmas thinking about you. Ooh, like, you no, know? no. That sounds desperate. That sounds <laughs> hella desperate. Like, you're not even just saying Merry Christmas and then just seeing if they respond and seeing if you could get that conversation to go that way. It's a Merry Christmas. I want you to know. 
what I'm after right now. And I want you to respond. Yeah. It's looking for some sort of no, response. No, no. That's that's skeevy. Now, I, 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 I'm not going to just throw people under the bus here. I'm guilty of this. I've done it. Like I said, I've had to sort of learn the hard way. It's, yeah. it's sort of best. Now, if you, you know, you're in a Wawa and you happen to run into somebody, what are you going to do? That's... You try to duck and and go down down the chips aisle, I've done or that. you sneak out the back door. I go. I pretend I'm on the phone. <laughs> That's uh, my the Target by my house. Somebody now works at that I try to avoid, and not not an ex, just a guy that I try to avoid. Um, hopefully he doesn't watch this because that's going to be weird. But whatever. I don't really care. Um, and I will, I'll see him and I'll be at the register. And um, well, as I'm trying to like leave the store, because if anybody knows me, I love Target more than life itself. Um, I'll go and I'll like call somebody. And even if they don't answer, I'll just stand, sit on the phone so that they avoid talking. I don't make eye contact. I like dart my eyes down and I grab my phone instantly to avoid the conversation. I do that. I've done that a lot. Okay. And I'm not... Not proud of it. <laughs> All right. So what I want to know is, have you sent or received any of these texts or Facebook messages from mm-hmm. exes past? Did it happen to you over this holiday season? If so, what did you send or what did you get? And then how did you reply? Let us know in the comment box below. You can always tweet us. It's Sojo 1049 FM on Twitter. Did I get that right? Yeah. It's getting hot in here. It in is really studio. warm in here. We sort of half de- decorated for Christmas. Now we're in the process of half undecorating. And um, Your deodorant we're... isn't helping you now either. It's <laughs> 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 wet. At least you're wearing a dark shirt. All right. I'm going to go find a couple panty liners or paper towels or something. <laughs> get this situation under control. Thanks for checking out Around the Mic on Sojo. Please subscribe so that you always know when we're posting new episodes. And remember, if you want to watch all of this happiness go down live in the studio. You want to watch this. <laughs> Check it out. Sojo1049 on YouTube. I'm Heather DeLuca. You can catch me on Sojo1049 weekdays from 3 to 7. Chelsea Corinne middays from 10 to 3. We appreciate you sticking with us through the new year and we'll talk to you next time on Around the Mic. See you then.